Hello, you guys. Because it's too fundamental to give it a title. I'm going to talk about what there is. Now, the first thing, though, uh, that we have to do is to get our perspectives. I make cauliflower. Believe it or not. About the basic ideas which, as Westerners living today in the United States, influence our everyday common sense, our fundamental notions about what life is about. And there are historical origins for this. So, which influence us more than most people realize. I'm just running out of time. Which are built into the very nature of the language we use and of our ideas of logic and of what makes sense altogether. And these basic ideas I call myths, not in using the word myth to mean simply something untrue, but to use the word myth in a more powerful sense. A myth is an image. In terms of which we try to make sense of the world. Now, for example, a myth in, in a way is a metaphor. If uh, you want to explain electricity to someone who doesn't know anything about electricity, you say, well, you talk about an electric current. Now, the word current is borrowed from rivers, it's borrowed from hydraulics. And so you explain electricity in terms of water. Now, electricity is not water, it behaves actually in a different way, but there are some ways in which the behavior of water is like the behavior of electricity. And so you explain it in terms of water. Or if you're an astronomer and you want to explain to people what hey, you Google. mean by an expect. 3% volume. Thank you. So, one of the things that I wanted to follow up on yesterday, we were talking about friends. And I can't touch on Friends, the basis, without touching on the show Friends. Now, Friends <clears throat> is a very interesting show. If you watch it, it pretty much didn't hold its time, so it's a little bit um, outdated. However, I also wanted to say the fan theories uh, on Friends has to do with uh, the seven deadly sins. And each one of the Friends is one of the seven deadly sins. And I just need to Google the, I don't want the fan theory, because I already know the fan theory, but I want the sins up. Seven dead sins. I've seen Friends so many times, I, I know this almost by heart. I just want to reference them. Okay, here they are. So, if you guys can even think back to the show that watch it, um, each one of the characters kind of personifies uh, one of the sins. And you can start from uh, episode one. I know it's with uh, Rachel Green. She is doing her, you know, she's like running away from her, her wedding or whatever. And even her last name, Green, pertains to money. She is, she's somebody that is selfish and she's constantly focused on you know material wealth and just from that very aspect Rachel Green is a very very crappy character in Friends but she's got some of the best acting and she's probably the probably the one of the funniest out of all all of them she's got the best comebacks she's smart witty and I think she was actually going to leave the show too if um if she did, if her character didn't develop at all I think that's why they, they wrote her in her pregnancy towards the end of the show because she just didn't do anything. She was just there to be, like, docked at, you know, like, by, by you know, people that, like, want to watch the show for her, specifically her. But, um, yeah, she was greed. Uh, gluttony, I don't think we really need to talk too much about gluttony. Uh, that would be Mr. Joey Tribbiani. Uh, he was constantly... Uh, fretting over food and like uh, he uh, he was also like a very shallow character but I think he had the most depth um, out of all the friends 
we might think that he is kind of the dumbest, but he wasn't. He is probably the most kindest and most genuine out of all the friends. If there is any one friend that held true to what I see in a friendship or what I think a friend should be, Joey Tribbiani probably ticks every box of somebody that you want standing in your corner. Uh, there isn't anyone. He's loyal. You know, he's he's compassionate. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't come down to brains because when you're running around this mental plane, you can't you can't put your brains up against anyone else's brain because it's actually the heart is what makes a person a person. So so I know he he did uh, traverse a lot of <laughs> gluttony. He like doesn't share food, not even with Emma, but uh, he's one of the characters in Friends that I I think that um, should. The, care, the show Friends was not about any specific one of the friends, but it's about all of them together. And they actually had trouble writing the show because they had to write people in for last seconds because they're like, we didn't even put Phoebe in this episode. So then that's why a lot of the seasons uh, you watch, it's like, why is this side story happening? It's because they didn't want to like make the show about, you know, like, you know, Ross and Rachel or, you know, Chandler and Monica's relationship. They wanted it to... They want to encapsulate like the idea of all the friends together, uh, always bringing a part to uh, the party or, you know, wh what home is and home is where the heart is. So you got to look at what your friends are. So uh, let's see. Lust. Which one do you guys think lust would be out of all the friends? Just think for two seconds. I know you probably know. I need to take a bite of cauliflower. But... Lust is the intense need for desire and affection. I think a lot of people, male, female alike, fall into um, that kind of category where they like need attention. And maybe it's not even sexual attention. Sometimes it's a little bit, it's physical, it's a little bit mental, it's a little bit emotional, but attention is attention. And uh, if you want to think about Ross, Ross was the one that was completely lustful. He was completely... Uh, always in and out of relationships. He was constantly like getting married. He's he's the divorce guy, you know. He always thinks that the grass is greener on the other side of the field. And there's a lot of people that always want something else as soon as they have what they want. And I've been burned by those people many times. And I'm sure a lot of you two uh, have also been burned by those people. And it's really easy to become bitter and cynical and nihilist and not want to give back and just keep on building up a, a what's it called like a barricade of trust where you think you're protecting yourself but you're just blocking yourself in and you're like those kinds of people just they will never grow because it takes so much time they've spent so much time building up those blocks and those walls that you'll never you'll never be the person that's going to break them down and I have some friends that have been hurt so bad by a past relationship that they will never move on they are stagnant but they actually claim to be like some of the most uh, real people ever. But like they hide behind their own, they hide behind their own eyes and they say, hey, if I don't open up to anyone, then I won't ever get hurt again. What an immature and pussy way to be living life. Next, we got laziness. Which one of you guys thinks laziness is one of the friends? If you're guessing Chandler, you are correct. Yes, he was very successful, even though we never figured out what he actually did for a living. But he was also the sloth. He was the one that was always trying to bring people down and be like, hey, you know what? We could just not do anything. <laughs> it would be a lot better. Joey, uh, he always supported his friends. But you also look at his, in, his individual life. He didn't grow at all. He didn't grow throughout the entire, in, entire um, seasons of Friends until he got together with Monica. Monica was his balance, and Monica was the one that actually made him grow as a character. And you find out that, like, I mean, even, like, when he was with um, that one that one uh, girl that she's always got the loud noise, that voice, he, like, bought a plane ticket to go to Yemen. And he, like, instead of just saying, hey, I don't like you, I don't want to be with you, he's like, I'm moving to Yemen. You know, like, that sheer laziness and coward, coward way to be uh, approaching life. So you want to think about... Um, being lazy is, is important to some people, but at some point you, you have to get out of your funk and you have to get back up and you have to start fighting back. 
Uh, it's all right to have bad days. It's, it's, it's okay to be down on yourself every now and then. But laziness is one of the most um, perverted, I think, isn't habits to actually have because you just give up on things and like you as soon as you like get up you just fall back fall back asleep I don't understand why people don't want to like attack their life and attack the world and come at it at so many different angles and just be like you know we could just sleep today oh you know we could binge watch you know another another episode or another season of a show I mean I don't watch a lot of TV but when it comes down to winter time and I'm stuck inside yeah I notice myself being a little bit lazier being inside so Mr. Chandler you lazy bone guy so um, we got wrath who do you think has wrath if you are guessing Phoebe you're correct she has some of the most um, resentful anger growing up I think that her entire mind and heart encapsulates what a child is. She never wanted to um, grow up because she got hurt so much as a child. Her mom committed suicide and it was she became a mugger and like she grew as a person but she still stayed stay as a child in her head. And what that turns into is it, it boils down to it'll end up being resentment. You always have a, a blame card and you always have a Somebody else has got the issue for having the reasons the way you are, the way you are. But all those reasons are, you can be developed the way you are and wired the way you are. But I am a clear case of somebody that can rewire your brain and you can change. But you just have to, you have to identify it, you have to be aware of it, and you have to square up and face it every day. Because... Like laziness, you, it will come up out of nowhere. And procrastination will come up out of nowhere. I'll take care of it tomorrow. I'll do it then. You know, like those those are things you're going to look back. You might sit out. You might sit out the race just at the beginning. And you want to say, hey, I'm going to jump in a little bit. But 10 years will go by and you look back and you'd be like, you know, I just, I missed the gunshot. I don't know what happened. And then that's where the anger will come in and the frustration. And you're just going to be mad at yourself. But you're always going to have a reason why you didn't act and it was always going to be a re now is going to be the reason then but now you have to find the reason now why you're not doing what you want to do and you need to find that tackling fuel and go for it so uh what well, i think we have what two more two more guys um jealousy a lot of people don't know what jealousy is uh which friend would encapsulate jealousy and this is the one friend on the entire uh show that kind of sat in the background and his name was Gunther he constantly coveted everyone else and he wanted um Jennifer Aniston's character throughout the entire entire um season and he never like made a move uh, instead he was bitter and angry and resentful towards Ross and anyone else that like <laughs> came in into her um presence because he like he thought he controlled her or he wanted her so bad you even listen to the thoughts in his head. Jealousy is very dangerous. I think it's very important to want something that you don't have, but I don't think it's exactly safe or healthy for you to want it to a, a certain extent to where like you're thinking about it. Uh, you should use uh, jealousy maybe as a f like a focal point and kind of an idea or a scope and then use that as your targeting range it's not bad to be jealous but it is bad to be jealous all the time uh, it'll poison relationships it'll poison your heart it'll poison your mind and it'll poison the people around you so a lot of the things you, you may need to boil down to what jealousy may be is the people that you're around and it might not be that you're actually a jealous person. You're just hanging around people that are not trustworthy and it's hurting you. And it kind of like boils down to jealousy. Last, uh, we have the most deadly of all sins. My family is the one they are the most prideful. And we're talking about Monica. She is so full of pride all the time. She's got to be the best in everything. She's got to have the most, the highest competition, the best of everything. And I don't think she was very happy until she found somebody as miserable as Chandler. And that's kind of when those two souls and those two universes collide that they complement each other. 
So I want you guys to think about some of the shows that you watch, whether it be a new one or an old one, and see kind of see the ideas that they're coming across. People like shows for certain reasons, but they don't really think about why they like them. They just hit them a certain way and they'll keep watching it. Maybe it's funny, but yeah, those little snippets of like satire are just to keep you along. But the writers have a true message that are going on within the show itself and within the, you know, protagonists of the characters. So you have to look at those. And that's why I'm so drawn to, to media. Uh, and I kind of want to turn into a, a critic when it comes to these aspects because, yeah, Friends is a very underappreciated show. And it is overappreciated by some fans. And some of those super fans don't even know why they like the show. But um, I just wanted to... This actually was supposed to be just like a one or two minute video and I was going to talk about the Seven Deadly Sins, but I guess I broke down all the characters. But um, yeah, pick your friends or pick your enemies and find the ones that are worth fighting for because sooner or later they're either going to try to burn you or you're going to burn them. So take, take, care, take care of your tribe, you guys. I love you. I'll, I'll talk to you later. I got to finish my cauliflower. It's getting cold. But it's spicy.